All right, everybody. Starting a slideshow. All right, everybody, thank you for joining us. Um, my name is Felipe. I'm with the San Diego Financial Literacy Center, Debt Wave Credit Counseling. I'm the Community Outreach Coordinator here. And today we're going to go over the Federal Reserve and interest rates. What is the Federal Reserve? Why do we keep hearing about them? How do they affect so much in our personal financial situations? How it can affect your debt payoff journey and how, um, you know, mostly it, it well, I'll get to it. I'll, I'll, I'll jump right into it. And first, I'm going to kind of explain what is it? How did it get started? Why is it important? So the Federal Reserve System, FRS, or simply the Fed, uh, as it's most, I'll probably refer to, refer to it today as the Fed, and you'll hear about it on the news. It's the Central Bank of the United States. It was created in 1913 by the Federal Reserve Act. Um, it's both banks' bank and the government's bank. So it it allows, you'll see here in a little bit, but it, it it's basically when a bank needs a bank, they go to the Federal Reserve. When the government needs a bank or uses a bank, because our government does use bank to pay taxes, collect taxes, all that stuff, they need a, somewhere to put it, they use the Federal Reserve's uh, the Fed to kind of collect it, but then there's so much more because they're involved in policy making. They're involved in, uh, you know, some of the decisions that they have have every day have affect our every day potentially. So, uh, you know, they're they're kind of a big deal. So, how is the federal or how is the Fed? Um, oh, I just want to. Um, how is it set up? So it's the one U.S. central bank is the Federal Reserve. You'll see over here. They have three key parts within the Federal Reserve. Uh, one is the Federal Reserve Board of Governors. And, you know, they're kind of like the ones calling the shots. And uh, believe me, I had a bunch of slides with a whole bunch of lines and a whole bunch of this person goes here. This person's appointed by, you know, appointed by the president, uh, approved by Congress. Um, then you got your 12 Federal Reserve banks. They're spread out around the country. I also had a list of all 12, but then I was like, you know, if someone's really excited to learn where all 12 of them are, um, quick Google search, you'll find it. And the and then there are the Federal Open Market Committee as well. Um, their five key functions is conducting the nation's monetary policy, helping maintain the stability of the financial system, which is you know, a, a big part supervising and regulating financial institutions, uh, making sure banks behave, making sure they have enough money put away um, in reserves and, and everything that goes along with that, fostering payment and settlement systems safely and efficiently and promoting consumer protection and community development, you know, so that one bank can write a check to another bank and they can, you know, get that transaction done. Um, and, and this little chart is thanks to Investopedia. Um, you know, it, it, there's a lot to it. And I was going to try and explain it all. And, and I was doing my research to kind of brush up on it. And then I came across this really cool video um, also by uh, Investopedia that I wanted to go ahead and um, share with you. But first, let me make sure I'm sharing my audio. Um, so otherwise, it's going to be a real boring video if you can't hear it. Uh, doo -doo. Share. Oh, wow. Well, this video is going to fall really flat if I can't get there. How do you do it? Um, you would think by now with all the Zoom that we've been doing, I would have had this figured out. There you go. Share sound. All right. So let me switch gears over to that real quick. And then we will um, check out this cool little video. Federal Reserve System, FRS. The Federal Reserve System is the central bank of the United States. It regulates monetary policy and supervises the nation's banking system. The Fed includes the Central Board of Governors and 12 regional Federal Reserve Banks. Among the Fed's main duties is its responsibility to make sure the money supply doesn't grow too quickly or too slowly. It uses monetary policy to control that growth the Fed can change reserve requirements, which are the percentages of deposits that banks must retain. 
It can also change the interest rate, called the discount rate, paid by member banks when they borrow money or it can buy or sell treasury securities to increase or decrease the money supply. The Fed's other duties include regulating banks and protecting the credit rights of consumers. It maintains the financial system stability and it provides the U.S. government with financial services. The Fed works independently from the government, which uses fiscal policy to regulate economic conditions. So that, uh kind of hopefully explains it. Um, again, we could probably do an entire college course on the Fed. Uh, if you take an econ course, you're gonna be uh, enjoying more information on the Fed and the Federal Reserve, how it works, how it affects economics. Uh, but, you know, uh, for today, you know, that that's kind of, it's great. You know, that was the video, hopefully you understand it. Um, but so what has been happening? You know, why are we all of a sudden talking about the Fed? It feels like maybe before COVID, I mean, really, they're out of sight, out of mind, right? You know, they're still meeting. They're still, um, you know, their next meeting is January 30th through February 2nd. So, um, you know, they'll be in the news again shortly. And hopefully now you, you have a better understanding of, you know, what you're hearing about when they're talking about the Fed um, and, and everything that goes along with it. So what's been happening? All right. You've also heard of inflation. I think you've heard about it here. If you've checked out our podcast, you have definitely heard a couple episodes on inflation. If you haven't and you just buy groceries, you've noticed that at the checkout stand, inflation is real. It was really going out of control there last year. So in an effort to control the inflation, the Fed increased interest rates, or the, the, the basis points, uh, seven times last year. And you know that's a lot. And, and the total increase was 4.25 percentage points. Uh, so it got more expensive to borrow money, the banks. And then, you know, obviously they pass that along to us, the consumers. Uh, if the Fed's predictions and some of the other predictions I was reading hold true, uh, some predict a 1.25 increase in 2023, which is, you know, compared to that 4.25, not a big deal. But when you add it to how much things have already gone up, um, We'll see. We'll see. Hopefully it's it, it's that and, and not more. Um, again, next meeting coming up here in a couple of weeks. So we should, you know, learn more shortly. Uh, but, you know, that's all great. And that, those are the facts. But, um, you know, <laughs> what does that have to do with me, you and our interest rates? Right. Uh, that's cool. It's all happening. There's really very little that we could do on as an individual on it. Um, but uh, it does affect us. And, and the way it, help, it hurts our interest rates is debt is more expensive. It's more expensive to borrow money now than it was at the beginning of last year. You know, interest rates were really, really low. Um, and they were slashed even lower, you know, at the beginning of, during the, the COVID pandemic in, in those early uh, months. And, you know, they stayed low. And, and all of a sudden, you know, inflation got a little out of hand. They started increasing interest rates. And as the Fed increases our interest rates, our APR on variable loans or new fixed APR loans that you're taking out increases. Now, this is variable. This is going to be your, your credit card APR. You know, here's a fun little activity. Take, go in your online banking, pull up a statement from, you know, a year ago and check out what your APR was and compare it to your most recent statement. And you know, unless you have some kind of fixed APR plan, like a debt management plan or something like that, your interest rate has probably gone up. Um, it'll, it, mortgage rates, interest rates, and I'll go over each one of these more specifically here in, in the next few slides. Mortgage rates have gone up. Auto loan rates have gone up. And then savings APY has also gone up. So um, we'll, we'll go over those. Um, so credit cards. Um, because the credit card interest rates are variable, when the Fed increases their APR, your APR then cre increase the borrowing uh, rate, you also increase the APR that you pay. So your credit card is charging you more on the balance that you are carrying. Obviously, perfect world, you use your credit card, you pay it off in full every month, you don't pay finance charges, you don't realize if they go up or down or 
or, you know, but if you're carrying a balance, if you're trying to pay down your credit cards and, and, and you realize, you know, it is getting tough. I don't, I feel like I'm getting hit with a lot more finance charges. You, you, you potentially are the, with the increase, the credit card APR has increased. Now you pay uh, more finance charges every month. So more of the money that you send every month goes towards paying off finance charges instead of towards paying off the principal, which then will create a longer payoff time period. It, it will take longer to pay off your credit cards. Um, and then it becomes harder to pay off your credit cards on your own. You know, if you start, if you're just sending in the minimum payment, which, you know, you don't want to be doing just the minimum payment, but if you're even sending a little bit more than the minimum payment, it becomes harder. You make less progress as those interest rates continue to rise it becomes harder to tackle that credit card debt on your own. Um, and then, you know, uh, as I mentioned, little activity, compare your statements from a year ago to, to your most recent one and, and see what that APR has done. You know, that could be, it could be interesting. If it's only gone up a couple of points, maybe, maybe you're not carrying a balance, maybe you're not worried about it. But if you're carrying a balance, especially a big balance and your APR has gone up a few points, you know, that can be a big financial difference between you know what you were paying last year and what you could potentially be paying now on top of the inflated prices where you know you might be paying more anyways uh, at the register at the gas pump or wherever it is that you're shopping then you have your mortgage um, if your mortgage is a fixed 30 year mortgage, you took it out whenever you took it out, that's your interest rate. It's not moving. It's not changing. Um, you know, you don't, it won't affect you in that way. But if you're in the market to buy, if you're in the process of purchasing a home, um, because the, the feds increase the APR, the average 30 year mortgage APR went from 3.22% in January of 2022 to 6.4% in November of 2022. That was the most recent data I could find. Um, it actually peaked as high as over 7% in, I think, October of last year. So it, it, that's a big difference when you're talking about 30 years worth of interest, when you're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars, when you're talking about trying to get into that home. So those higher rates mean more finance charges during the life of the loan, you know, significantly more finance charges. You know, some people might look at that and say, well, that, you know, that's a little over 3%. 3% is not a big deal. 3% on a mortgage is a huge deal. Not only is it 3%, it's more than double or it's doubled now that I look at the math. You know, it, double APR is a big deal. Um what that causes is because you'll accrue more finance charges during the course of that 30 year mortgage, your mortgage payments will need to be higher because you still need to pay it off in the 30 years. So you have more balance to pay off in 30 years, which makes it less affordable for people to buy. Less people are able to go out and buy homes with a higher APR because you will have a higher mortgage payment. Um, if you start thinking about it as why would the Fed, you know, they're, they're not mean, they're not doing this to, to necessarily be mean. They're trying to reel back inflation. And one thing this does is it causes less people to go out and spend. Less spending then creates less demand. And now we're in an econ class again. And then supply and demand will take place. And then the prices will slow down because there's less demand. Again, I don't want econ. Um, I, I'm, I'm learning to love it, but <laughs> I don't want to teach it. Uh, so the higher... Mortgage payments has brought you know home prices back to earth, or or slowed their growth, or you know some places brought them down a lot. Uh, there's less affordability to buy, and it also limits people's refinance options. When the interest rates went down drastically, people were jumping on it and they're refinancing and taking out equity if they had it, or just bringing their payments down and things of that nature. With the interest rates up, it's just not happening in this in the same way. You know, you might it might not even be worth it you know, once you factor in the increase in your interest rates as you go. Auto loans. If you're in the market for a lo uh, for a car, whether it's new, used, whatever it is, new APR on um, auto loans went from 3.94 to 6.1% in, in 2022. 
the higher rates mean, again, more finance charges during the life of that auto loan. It's not as big a drastic scary number as a 30-year mortgage because it's hopefully a five-year loan on a much, much smaller amount. Uh, but percentage-wise, you know, it, it, it is a lot. Uh, it means higher auto payments. You know, some, I've seen a little trend on the social medias. On I watch them on uh, Instagram or Facebook, but I think they originate over at TikTok where people are so excited to share their huge astronomical car payments. And I just look at them, I can't help but shake my head and say, are you kidding me? You were smiling when you said that? That's your payment every single month? Um, yeah. Uh, so, but those high auto payments, less affordability also to buy. So car prices, again, starting to come back down to earth. Um, you know, and, it, and those interest rates are even higher when you're purchasing a used vehicle. Um, I was I was looking the other day, I thought I saw like 9% with great credit on a used car. And it's like 9%, man, we're almost up to double digits. Uh, that makes it difficult. That's a lot of money. So, you know, it, it is even higher for those used uh, car payments. So what's the positive side? I like to always try and find the positive side to, to most everything. Um, well, the positive side is if you're a saver and you're, you're looking to have your money grow, uh, inflation, well, first, um, this affects all of us, inflation has does appear like it's slowing. Um, it's not back to where they need it to be, want it to be, whatever you want to call it, um, but it has appeared to kind of slow down. Those drastic changes in, in interest rates, you know, cause it to slow down, whether, you know, we want to or not. It has it slowed down enough. Um, will they make more changes and slow it down too much? I don't know. Um, you know, all we could all I, we could really say is let's hope that the Fed uh, gets it right. <laughs> they find that tipping point, that balancing point, and they balance it right there. Not, you know, too much where we go into a, a, a recession, but enough to cool down inflation and find that balancing point. Don't go too far. Don't don't stop short. That's really what we're all rooting for here, um, you know, regardless of any other political. Uh, that's the cool thing about the Federal Reserve is kind of we're all rooting for them. Uh, the uh, higher APY, though, if you if you've noticed savings accounts, I mean, you're still not getting a huge return, but, you know, it, you're getting much better interest rates than you were on, on savings accounts, on CDs, on, you know, all the different saving products that are available through banks. And that's because, you know, the the increase in, in the Fed, you know, I've seen online savings accounts um, you know, over 3%, close to 4%. And, and it's like, wow, that's cool. You, it was 1% two years ago or a year ago, you know. So if you have money to save, you can get more for your money at this point in time. Um, better rates on bonds, uh, on you know whether they're government bonds or you know local bonds, state bonds, whatever it is, you're getting better rates on on all those saving products, and you know that's good if you if you have money to save and, and you're looking to have it grow. Um, that that's a positive. Uh, the stock market it, that's up and down. Whatever every time the Fed meets, it's very volatile. Uh, that's a whole presentation in and itself, but the the fed meeting and and possibly making changes or making changes uh just kind of really messes with the stock market it's up it's down it's volatile it's moving uh so and remember that's that's long term uh investing and saving so um you know just don't panic when when it goes up or when it goes down and then don't celebrate too hard when it goes up uh, so there is a, a small positive silver lining um, any questions? Also, I encourage you to check out um, the podcast episode we did uh, on inflation when we spoke to Professor Jim Charkins. Um, it's not a boring econ class type of lecture by any means. He's super funny, super entertaining. Um, and you can listen to it there or wherever you get your podcast. You can find Talk Wealth to Me and, uh, you know, take a listen to the episode. Or if you're more of a reader, or I recommend both, uh, check out the blog 
over on the debt wave website, Federal Reserve raises interest rates for the seventh time. That was right after uh, the previous increase, the most recent one at the end was December of last year. So again, we're, let's keep our eyes open uh, January 30th, February 2nd, see what they come up with, see if they increase the interest rates uh, on us again, by how much, how much more they do it in 2023. And, um, you know, let's, let's hope they get it right. Thank you everybody for watching. If there's no questions, you can always continue learning our podcast called Talk Wealth to Me is available wherever you get your podcasts on our websites. Um, and then join us in two weeks, Romance and Money Scams. You know, we're getting to that. You might have noticed the decorations at the grocery store have started to change. There's a lot of red, a lot of pink, a lot of hearts and teddy bears. It's Valentine's time. Um, we're like a month away, but they're already on it. Um, so we wanted to get ahead of that in early February with romance and money scams. Just kind of look out what to look out for. For those of you in search of romance, make sure your finances don't pay the price. Um, so that's it for me. Thank you, everybody, for stopping by and, uh, you know, register for this one and any future Swim Lives at Eventbrite. And we look forward to seeing you at the next one. Have a great day.